The, uh, the antecedents, I believe, to our present financial turmoil and really economy-wide problems are best understood uh, with an historical look back. Since the War of 1812, and supposedly there'll be a graph up here shortly, there have been, by my count, 16 credit crises in the United States, some severe, some relatively mild and moderate. All were marked by speculative excesses in the years immediately preceding the crisis. Despite protestations that somehow this time is different, uh, these speculative excesses invariably develop. They are manifested in such things as business expansion and the acquisition of other companies at high premiums, in leverage and commodity prices and farm prices, in the development of certain exotic securities, in management compensation and other things. The graph uh, shows these credit crises as ovals by the year in which they occurred. Superimposed are two time series that date back to the early 1800s, the federal debt, and also the uh, S&P Industrial Stock Index. Both are log scaled. Incidentally, the federal debt, in fact, did touch zero, uh, actually $33,000, in 1835 and 1836. Uh, Andrew Jackson, president then, was a real fiscal hawk. So while there is a lag correlation, uh, between these credit crises and the two time series, this is not observable really in this long span, wide span uh, uh, graph. To put things in perspective, and this has been touched on by others, 2008 was not the most severe credit crisis, but the most severe since uh, the depression of the 1930s and in 1907. In 1907, a bank run began on the Knickerbocker Trust uh, Company, and it quickly spread into a financial panic. The same widespread run on banks occurred in the 1930s, of course. To date, uh, government intervention in the financial markets is the greatest of any previous credit crisis that the United States has faced. Now, speculative excesses in the past have occurred in waves, and it typically takes two to three years to purge uh, these speculative excesses. Some take a good deal longer, 1873, the crisis of 1873, took until uh, 1879 to purge it. We are only about halfway through the normal purging cycle, and uh, this isn't likely to be a normal set of purging. Recall that beginning in the late 1970s, we had deregulation of the financial services industry in the United States, where functional and geographical boundaries that separated financial institutions were purposely broken down. The forces of competition, often but not always, uh, uh, Cleansing were unshackled, and much good came in lowering costs and inconvenience in financial intermediation. No longer, however, it came with greater risk-taking and less disciplined behavior. No longer, for example, uh, did you have to carry a loan on your own books if you made it. You could securitize it, capture fat front-end fees, and essentially not have to worry about whether or not the loan was paid. So it's been pointed out by others, throughout the mid-2000s, the present decade, risk was systematically underpriced. It seems clear to me, at least, that self-regulation and market discipline, frequently quixotic, cannot stem the type of systemic risk that we've experienced recently. So I believe that fundamental reform of the financial services industry is in order. The time is right. After the most severe uh, credit crises of the past, uh, 1857, uh, 1907, and the 1930s, the Congress undertook substantial uh, regulation of the financial services industry, substantial reform. And while more recently reforms were talked about uh, following the 1987 stock market crash and the 1998 blow up of long-term capital management, these never really came to pass. History tells us that uh, the lessons learned from any financial crisis other than a severe one are short-lived in memory. As the ultimate safeguard uh, to stem a financial panic, the government should, I believe, have in place the apparatus that will allow it to curtail speculative excesses in advance of their actually occurring, an ounce of prevention being worth a pound of uh, cure, if you will. Now, a number of things are in order. Regulatory authorities dealing with the financial services industry, broadly defined, should be consolidated. There are too many of them often with conflicting objectives and competition among them, relics, I believe, of the past. Some of our existing regulations date back to the National uh, Banking Act of 1863, 
the midpoint of the Civil War. Moreover, there are regulatory gaps, uh, pointed out by Ben Bernanke recently with respect to AIG. Here, the Financial Products Division of an otherwise relatively stable, not completely stable, uh, insurance company that was writing normal types of insurance uh, products, this division was able to make huge risky bets without regulatory oversight. Uh, to be specific as to reforms, I would have the SEC responsible only for disclosure of information to investors on new and existing securities together with regulation of mutual funds. No regulation of the remaining investment banks in our country and others for which I believe the SEC has proven to be inept. As inept as the Office of Thrift Supervision, uh, IndyMac, if you will, uh, and other myopic regulators unable to think in terms of systemic risk. And incidentally, I do not believe that mark-to-market -market accounting is the basic or even a basic problem. Uh, I think the popcorn example of Eddie Lazier that the, uh, essentially the burner was burning very fast. The FDIC, I think, should continue its present role, as should the Fed, uh, along much of the lines that John Taylor mentioned. However, I would consolidate all other regulatory agencies into a new agency with broad powers to regulate investment banks, again, those few remaining, insurance companies, mortgage companies, hedge funds, finance companies, thrifts, credit unions, commodity firms, brokerage firms, prime dealers, prime brokers rather, derivative and future market dealers, and banks not directly regulated or supervised by the FDIC. And any U.S. or foreign financial institution that operates in the United States financial markets would fall under the agency's purview. For non-depository institutions, uh, I would establish size thresholds for inclusion in regulatory oversight say above $10 billion in assets and $40 billion in derivative uh, notional amount uh, positions for a single institution or a collection of institutions with interlocking ownership. Supervisory and regulatory oversight would embrace asset quality, leverage, counterparty risk, as well as overall risk, with full power of the agency to curtail overly risky activities. Power, probable insolvency of a financial institution, I think, should be dealt with very quickly quickly recognized, and the institution forced into reorganization or liquidation. In the case of a uh, depository institution, the FDIC would proceed with an orderly reorganization. Now, non-depository institutions below these size thresholds uh, would not be regulated per se, but a number would be required to uh, register. And these institutions would not be recipients of a bailout should they get in trouble. Now, you might ask, why the size thresholds? I just simply think that uh, the regulatory and supervisory functions are not manageable if you include every single financial institution in the United States. And most are not uh, responsible for systemic risk. The governing party I would have be independent, appointed by the uh, President and the Congress for, say, 10-year staggered terms. As part of the change, and this has been mentioned, a new department should be established, sub-department, to facilitate mortgage workouts. Presently, many loans have been securitized, and there are legal impediments, of course, to this. Now, a lot has been said about uh, amelioration of uh, mitigating mortgage foreclosures, but I think uh, what I've observed, it's neither, it's neither efficient nor uh, particularly fair. New federal standards, I think, should be placed on mortgage bankers so as to upgrade underwriting standards, to eliminate deceptive practices, and to provide transparency to potential borrowers according to the risks that they might incur. 